I had mentioned I had mentioned that there were three models of fitness. The truth is, there was some there was a, there was another model that wasn't it wasn't quite it wasn't quite good enough to be a model in, in such that we couldn't put it into the graph. And so it was just called the fourth curiosity or a fourth, fourth observation. It looked like this. So just think every time you go to your doctor, there are metrics that we think of that are that'll tell you whether you're healthy or not. And these metrics lie on very opposite ends of the same spectrum. So for example, on one end, we've got illness or pathological. We've got wellness at the top or in the middle and normal. And then on the other end, we've got fitness or let's say I like the way this looks because if normal's here, that means this is abnormal and fitness is abnormal. That's fine, right? All right, so anyway, I'll take blood pressure because that's the most common one. If you've got a blood pressure that's something like 200 over 115, you are ill. Something's wrong. You, gotta, you have to go to the hospital, right? When I was in school, this changes every three to four years. But 120 over 60 was normal when I was taught, right? It changes every three years. And finally, you've got Olympic... Olympic athletes that sit around with 90 over 40 blood pressure. So we can we can play this game with heart rate, we can play it with your blood sugar, we can play it with your ejection fraction of the heart, HGA1C, the marker for diabetes, any metric that you can think of, right? We can even do it with something that's not bullshit, like strength, right? Hey, what's that? Yeah. Anything that you can think of. And even things that is better, very, even things that are very hard to measure, like your mood, right? So you've got depressed here, and you've got life's okay. Well, I'm feeling okay, and then I'm the baddest motherfucker on the block, kind of stuff. You can even put those on these things. But here's what CrossFit saw: that fitness and health were parts of the, were were different parts of the same reality. It's not like it's not like you can be fit and not healthy, you know? Because there's there's a lot of camps that think that the two cannot be bridged, cannot be reconciled. That's not what we saw looking at this metric. So now, looking at this, if you if you sat here, can't you see that if you were to become, to, in order to protect yourself from becoming ill, you would have to first be normal before before being here. And so it made sense to us that any metric that we knew of, which are hundreds, and even things that we didn't know of, which are potentially thousands, you want them all sitting here and fast. And let's say, let's take a snapshot of you now. If you've got something going on that's not here, but here, we want everything moving here as fast as possible. Okay, as fast as possible. So now, I'm gonna rewind a little bit. This is, these are just the things we've mentioned as far as the, the metrics of health. I want you to think of things that you want out of an exercise program. Everything that you want, right? So for most guys, it's, it's get cut, get strong, Lots of, you know, build, build lean muscle mass, lose fat, get faster, punch harder, jump higher, all that stuff. Anything you want out of an exercise program. You don't even have to tell me what it is, right? Anything that you want, you can put it on this, you can put it on this list. So let's just say strength, speed, punch harder, vertical jump, whatever. Put them included in this. Those things, you will get to those things faster and better with high intensity exercise, not low intensity exercise. High intensity exercise. And all of that's and it's for this reason that intensity itself is the independent variable most commonly associated with optimizing adaptations to any exercise program. In, intensity is the independent variable most commonly associated with, with uh, maximizing returns. So with intensity we know that if you want to, if you want more stuff out of your exercise program. So I'll, I'll give you an example. Body fat. This is just one one example, but it's the most dramatic in my mind. Let's say you let's say let's take an example of low intensity exercise, like 30 minutes of jogging along the beach, and something like a five minute Fran as as an example of high intensity exercise. Fran, I'm sorry. Fran is Fran is one of our named workouts. It's okay. 21 15 9 of uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> thrusters and pulls. Right? But one of those workouts where it's like five minutes long, but you're on the ground for 30 minutes. One of those things. If you jog on the beach for 30 minutes, it's, it's the oxidative pathway, it's the aerobic pathway, you will burn more fat than doing cramp, for sure. Right? Because, it's, because it's six times as long as cramp if you did a five minute workout. But the minute you stop 
jogging on the beach, the fat burning stops immediately. But if you ran a marathon, your fat burning stops two to three minutes after running a marathon. But if you just finished Fran, the fat burning effect stays with you 12 to 18 hours. It's up to nine times the fat burning effect, wow. right? Yes. After our last workout, yeah. which was 7.30 in the morning, yeah. I had an event that evening. Yeah. And they kept asking me why you're sweating so much. Yes, yes. Hmm. And I'm like, I worked out at 7.30. Yeah. And I couldn't stop. Sure. Like my, I just felt like I, I had taken two showers. Sure, sure, yes. And I was still like sweating and sweating and sweating. Yes, uh, yes, absolutely. The kick to your metabolism is so potent, right? And that's, so that's just, what does it, is the, the kick to the, to the yeah. metabolism? Yes, essentially, yeah. Because, and that's, here's, here's the thing about CrossFit too. You don't, you don't like looking, you don't like looking at what, what necessarily go, what necessarily happens inside. It's actually called, I, I like that you asked that question. We don't, we don't, we're not concerned with analysis per se. We're concerned with it. All we've got is inputs and outputs. Right? And what, so let's say, let's say I put deadlift, run, push up into you, and what comes out of you is strength, power, speed. Right? We don't know what happens in here. And we don't necessarily, like, we care, but we don't care. Right? Because if we spend a lot of time here, that's, that's the job of the scientists in the university. Ours is just to get you fit. Right? But if I put something like lateral raise, leg extension, adductor, or leg curl, what comes out of you is, we don't know, we don't know, it's some, something useless, right? So, the thing is, so Jackson, we don't know exactly what happens, we have theories for sure, but all we know is that you will, you will shed body fat fast if you do high intensity workout versus doing long slow distance. You will get stronger faster with high intensity or exercise. My, uh, my neighbor, she's a physical therapist. Sure. We, we had to argue this week. Sure, yeah. Well, those, those CrossFit workouts aren't really aerobic. Sure, sure. I'm like, well, I don't know. That's, yeah, yeah, that's kind of the point. Tell her, yes, that's, that's kind of the point. You're not really a man. Like, it's, that's, that's kind of the point. It's a woman, right? Yeah. Yeah, just by definition. It's not, it's not this argumentative. Right? Yeah, but that's... Anyway, so I'll, but I will come back to that. All right, in fact... I'll just put that just to remind you. Okay. But anyway, that is the fourth curiosity. So across this contention, we want everything that we know and don't know going in this direction fast. And to wit, if you've got a lot of things going in this direction, but one or two things going in the wrong direction, we want you to entertain the notion that something's very wrong, something's wrong with your program. So we introduce this model to, say, the medical industry or the pharmaceutical industry. The usual interventions are either surgical or med. So for example, my blood pressure's high, we're gonna give you a med for that. So the med may fix your blood pressure, so your blood pressure is going here, but it'll fuck up your cholesterol and your cholesterol will go here. Then they'll give you a med for your cholesterol, so your cholesterol will go here, but it'll jack up your heart rate. So there's a bunch of a bunch of shit that we're not very impressed with that model. Even the surgical stuff, fix you with surgery, something else is gonna go wrong. Scar right. tissue. Scar tissue, right. So, and that's not to say, that's not that's not me saying that there's no need for it. Absolutely there's a need, absolutely, right? But the one analogy we like using is that CrossFit itself is preventative in nature and it prevents you from going here. So CrossFit coaches are, let's say, like a swim coach, but if you're hanging out here, your doctor is a lifeguard. Okay, so if, if you've got a 200, 115 blood pressure, the last thing you need is Fran and the paleo diet. What you need is to go to the hospital and see, see what's going on. You don't need a swim coach at that moment, right? But how to integrate this into the definition, into the definition of fitness was tricky. 